Good evening and welcome to Asasa Business PM with me, Kevin Annan. I am here with my co-host. Rosemary Balami. Uh, tonight on the SDG Hub, we will discuss a topic, uh, Voices of Impact, celebrating International Volunteers Day. And to, dis- to discuss this, we have two volunteers here with us. We have Godwin Doe, who is a Partnerships and Resource Mobilization Head, and also a volunteer with the Young Reporters for the Environment Ghana. We also have Mama Kwao Akita. He's a general secretary and also a volunteer with the Young Reporters for the Environment. (music) Business PM is brought to you in partnership with the Center for Sustainable Transformation, CIST. Um, good evening once again. Uh, you're welcome to the SDG Hub, as I said earlier. It's run by the Center for Sustainable Transformation, CEST, here on Asasi Radio. I'm your host, as I mentioned earlier, and as usual, I'm together with my co-host, Rosemary Balami, from the Young Reporters for the Environment, Ghana, YRE. It's a program run by CEST. Uh, today, we celebrate the spirit of giving back and making a difference in our communities. In honor of International Volunteers Day, we are privileged to host some incredible local individuals who are volunteers, who have dedicated their time, their energy, and passion to various causes. Uh, They embody the true essence of altruism and generosity. And today, we'll delve deep into their experiences, motivations, and the impacts of volunteerism on both themselves and the world around them. Rightly said, Kevin, as we celebrate International Volunteers Day, we recognize that these individuals represent a mosaic of selflessness, dedication, and empathy. Their stories echo a universal truth that every act of volunteerism, regardless of scale, contributes significantly to the fabric of our society. Their efforts illuminate paths towards positive change, embodying the essence of unity and shared responsibility. Join us in celebrating these unsung heroes to learn from their experiences and to ignite a spark within each of us to make a difference in the lives of others. Absolutely. Very nice words for our gentlemen here. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and today we are joined, as Rose mentioned, by a group of passionate and dedicated volunteers from the Young Reporters for the Environment Ghana. And they've been making a significant impact in their communities and beyond. Uh, we've been joined in the studio by Godwin Doe. He's a Partnerships and Resource Mobilization Head and volunteer for YRE Ghana. We also have Mama Kwao Akita, General Secretary and volunteer for YRE Ghana. Welcome, gentlemen. It's good to have you here in the studios. It's good, um, <laughs> it's, good it's good that you're happy to be here. Uh, first, we'd like you to, you to do a brief introduction of yourselves. I'll start with Mama. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, so... Um, Basically, I'm the director of Eco-Conscious Citizens Ghana, and I'm currently a second-year MPhil student reading environmental science at the University of Ghana with the Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies. So basically, I do anything um, that talks about the environment, biodiversity, and music. Yeah, so anything that's, any events going on, choral music, the environment, biodiversity, I'm there. Wow. I, I, I thought you were an artist, like a, <laughs> like a rapper or something. No, 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 no. Like just that. choral music, basically. <laughs> okay, interesting. And classical so, music. So you are, you, are, you are all about the action on the ground and also yes. the the technical part of it with yes. your MPhil. Yes. That's awesome. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Godwin. Godwin, can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? All right. Thank you very much. My name is Godwin Du, and I am a development-oriented young person. Uh, passionate about development so I see myself and describe myself as a development consultant um, I've had accumulated experiences in the UN uh, I've also participated locally with organizations that are assimilating development from environment to science mm. um, to business every other aspect of development I find myself there so I see myself as a 360 player and someone who is passionate about evoking positive change in my little way mm. so a brief des- a description of myself that's awesome. So we have two passionate gentlemen here. Uh, we'll, delve, we'll delve straight into the conversation. Uh, we are going to start by you telling us about what inspired you to become volunteers with YRE. What, what put you in that space? Okay, so I think I saw the link on someone's status. Mm. Right. It was the about climate change. Yeah. Yes, it was about climate yeah. change. A seminar. I was like, okay, volunteerism. Well, let me also apply and let's see. And I mean, I enjoyed that session with the workout and all. 
I was exhausted. But I mean, I've been volunteering. I think I did one with Macintosh last year, and um, with Eco Conscious Citizens over the past year, we did some plus. Um, we saved parks and gardens, uh, cantonments from some um, buildings. Mm. Yes, I mean. It started just, I think, about last year or so. But mm -hmm. Eco Conscious has been from 2019, 2019, 2020, during COVID. Yes. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Godwin, what inspired you? Wow. <laughs> this has been a journey because I've been into volunteering for the past eight, nine years. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's um, like uh, a, a whole lot. Yeah, so a lot of people see me and think I'm like a politician <laughs> because <laughs> they see me move from one point to another, but mm -hmm. it's not the case. Um, I read plant biology and biochemistry from the University of Ghana, okay. specialized more in plant and environmental biology. Mm. So I've realized that in our policy sphere, we don't have the scientists. Issues like Galamse is treated as a political issue than a science issue. Yeah. So what can I do as a scientist? That is why you see me moving all around. Mm. So my interest is more into policy, right, and policy and advocacy. And through volunteerism, you can actually advocate for change. Mm. So that is how my journey began. And I started off with um, youth action movements under the Plant Parenthood Association of Ghana. Yeah. So this was away from what I do academically, but just to get experiences. So my coming into YRE has been um, a shift and also a way to transfer skills that yeah. I've gathered from the very onset in the volunteerism. So YRE, what motivated me more into YRE was more of climate communication. We talk mm. climate change, we talk environmental sustainability. These are jargons used in the science sphere. How then can we break down this information to the average Ghanaian to understand? Mm. So I was looking at climate communication where the conversation around why I came up. I was like, okay, this is great for me to start something. So that is how come I started volunteering with why I and that's been a marvelous journey. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're glad to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Mama, so. Um, do you believe that uh, volunteering so far has had any impact on you? Yes. Yeah, because you, you mentioned that you have that educational background in environmental yes. studies and so on. Yes. But then having to go into the, you know, the hard stuff, going to the ground and working actually, did it influence your perspective? Of yes, course? because um, in the classroom, it's a different whole, it's all theory. Mm. Yeah. When you go to the grassroots level, you get to understand the people. Maybe what you were thought is actually different from what is on the ground. Mm. When it comes to, let's say, um, Galamse, as he said, people think, oh, it's that easy. But it's, it's very complicated mm. because people want jobs, right? They want some, um, it's a source of livelihood for them. For but mm. on the other hand, when it comes to biodiversity, it comes to water, I mean, when you look at the SDGs, you see that all these things are actually connected. Yeah. So they want um, sources of income. And we also want to protect the environment. We're also thinking about our health. So it's very compli uh, complicated. So once you go down to their level, you get to understand them and find out how best you can resolve the issues. So I mean, it's very good. I mean, you don't just sit in the classroom and just think, oh, this is it. You mm -hmm. have to go down there and try and understand, investigate. So that's where the science comes in. You go there, you do your analysis, you take data, you analyze, then now you come out with your conclusions then. Okay, uh, um, Godwin. All right, for me, it's been a great experience. So the impact on me is very, very high because um, I've been exposed to several platforms. I've been exposed to local communities. I've been exposed to the hard issues on ground. I've experienced outreaches in the Madino market where young people in markets may not even understand why they should avoid plastics. Mm. You know, because they don't understand the science behind it. The kind of exposure they have to this regarding their health alone is not really understood. So it has made me develop a different paradigm towards development and activism and volunteerism. Yeah. Because you need to understand these people and now carve an activity to suit them so that they can understand how do I explain to the market why in the market that the raw material that is the tomato she's getting to sell in the market is not as much as compared to that they used to have mm. because of climate change yeah. you know you should let them understand that so because of the pollution how you dispose of your plastic waste yeah. it chokes the water bodies leading to flood farmlands get flooded at the end of the day the farmer in the, in the farm doesn't get a very good yield so at the end of the day he 
the market woman will not have enough to be sell to even gain income for herself. Yeah. Yeah. This is more relatable. So it has given me a different paradigm to development, to activism, to volunteerism, and to advocacy. Yeah. Look at the local community, right? Let's say Jamestown as an area. The, they are the receiving end of plastics. Mm -hmm. They find plastics in the sea and all the things. It's actually disturbing because they go to fish and they fish plastics. How then do I go and sell plastics and then make money for my family? Forgetting that on the policy level, they are supposed to be charging the producers. Yeah. You know, we have the gripe, we have the Voltix, we have the Coca Cola. These guys are continually producing plastics mm -hmm. and the community are the receiving end. But on the policy level, they say, oh, communities need to take action. They need to go into uh, beach cleanups and other exercises. Yeah. They can do it and they keep doing it. But then, to what end yeah. is this? Because yeah. the cycles keep co co like continue because once they don't stop the production of this plastic, it's still going to end, up, going to end up in yeah. the seas. You know? So, I think the policy level is quite dicey, mm. which is another paradigm of learning for me, which I'm actually still learning to also see how best we can have a Georgia to have a homogeneous understanding between policy and action. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's very, very you know, interesting. So in what ways do you believe, again, Godwin volunteering contributes to positive change on a local and global scale? So if I should define volunteerism, volunteerism basically is about yielding your time, mm -hmm. your energy, your expertise you know, to cause change to what you feel is not right in your community. Mm -hmm. So what volunteering can do regarding change and development is that you as an individual coming from a community where you've identified a problem mm -hmm. will certainly pull resources and experiences together to evoke the change you want to see so volunteering can drive change way more than what even a government can do for a community mm -hmm. because the government doesn't understand the community the member of parliament they doesn't really understand because he or she spends less time in the community. community yeah. So you're the community leader who understands the issue. You relate to people in the community. It's just about gender-based violence. The member of parliament, the minister of gender cannot come and educate people on the detriments of gender-based violence. Yeah. Unless you as a community leader who can bring people on board to get this going. So volunteers can really, really evoke change in communities. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, International Volunteers Day is about recognizing the contributions of volunteers worldwide. So can you highlight the importance of acknowledging and celebrating these efforts? Yes. You know, when you do something good, you need to be applauded for it. Mm. It's a way to motivate people. Young people feel they are not celebrated enough because if you look at the volunteerism sphere, 90% of volunteers we are having in Ghana and globally are young people. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you acknowledge their efforts, you keep on driving them to do more. Mm -hmm. For example, if you, you do something good and then nobody says anything about it, how do you justify it's good? So you need a reaction of the community, you need a reaction of people around you to really validate what you're doing. You're doing mm -hmm. But it's not all the time. Sometimes the self fulfillment that comes to it goes with validation. So I think recognition is very important. Key. Yeah. All right, Mama. Um, uh, it goes without saying that volunteering means that you are expending a lot of your time and your energy to pour into other people and then get nothing in return. I mean, when I say nothing, I mean financial benefits <laughs> and so on. <laughs> how, do you, how do you cope with that? Because um, if people are going to look forward to the essence of volunteering, they are going to think about something for themselves. Yeah. So what what do you benefit at the end of the day, being a volunteer and giving so much? What do you get? Yeah. I mean, it's serving humanity and protecting the environment. I mean, it's the passion that drives me. Right. Mm. It's the passion. Without passion, you can't do a lot so of meaning you look beyond, even if you don't get money. I go for a lot of conferences. I don't get anything. I'm not, I'm not worried. I mean, the exposure <laughs> alone is enough. <laughs> the exposure alone is enough. I don't really care as long as at least I'm learning something. Mm. I'm helping the community. Learning. I'm helping other people. I mean, it's it's enough. That alone makes me happy. It makes you happy. Very I mean. interesting. <laughs> How about you, Godwin? <laughs> for me, I'm also driven by passion. But for, well, my perspective to volunteerism is like a combo of opportunities. Mm. Right? And I'm some spending money. time. <laughs> spending time. People get to know what I do. Mm -hmm. I get exposed, you know. If the money doesn't come today, I can bet for sure that it will lead to other bigger opportunities. Opportunities. So 
it's like having that bigger picture mm. in volunteerism. So you're looking long term, long term, yeah. long term benefits, you know, long term benefit because I'm gonna gain experience. I'm going to get educated, and the experience I'm even going to get is the best way to learn. Simply because we don't have the practical perspective to issues in the lecture theater. Yeah. But when I go on the grounds, I learn. I network, I meet people. I mean, it's, it's a myriad of opportunities, yeah. endless. But then looking at the Ghanaian context, do you think that we've, um, if young people especially have understood this whole volunteering, you know, um, um, you know thing? Because some people, if they, if they are not getting money from it, trust me, mm. they are not coming. So what about that? Do you think Ghana, we've gotten there as like, young people understanding this volunteering thing to be able to, you know, volunteer their time and all? As I said earlier, passion. Passion drives you. Because one, let me use this as an example. I read animal biology and mm. conservation science yeah. undergrad. So once you have that, you get in that exposure. Maybe there's a conference and your lecturers tell you to attend. You get more insight. You get to understand what you are learning. You go for a field trip. You collect data. Mm. You get to appreciate what's on the ground. And that kind of beauty adds more knowledge yeah. to what you already know. So with that, I mean, you can build on from there, unless maybe you don't enjoy the course. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there are other things, but I mean, people should be willing. When there's any opportunity, one lecturer told me this, Professor Tremantin, she was like, you have to read wide, avail yourself, go out there. And my father also tells me this thing, uh, when there's any program, just attend. You might learn a thing or two. Mm. You never know, you might meet someone there, that person would ask you a question or two, and you're able to at least interact with the person. You know, opens another door for you. So, I yeah. mean, it's just the passion. Yeah. And so enjoying what you do. Enjoy what you so, do, indeed. So, so volunteering puts it, the theory into practice. Yes. Mm. Pretty much. That's good. Uh, but, but you have to tell us some of the challenges you face, right? Hmm. Because obviously, nothing, nothing comes without its challenges. Exactly. Especially being a volunteer within the space. Mm. A space that isn't widely recognized or widely accepted yet in the current demographics of Ghana. It can be very difficult. So tell us some of the challenges you faced. Well, sometimes when you are going to some of these areas or maybe somewhere close, the financial aspect, people say, oh, I don't have money. I can't make it. Well, sometimes you have to sacrifice your own money. So you actually budget. If you're inviting five people, <laughs> you will budget. Okay, I'm bringing five people. Okay, I'll give each of them, let's say, 50 or 100 cities. Mm. So I've made plans. and I, get, I don't mind giving my money out. I mean, as long as they come and they work with other people, network, at mm. least they get so to So their funding is a challenge. Yes, funding is always mm. a challenge. But I mean, it's, you don't always have to expect money. But you know, times are hard. So everyone yeah, wants so money. So the economy <laughs> also, you know, influences yes, exactly. whatever. Yes, yes. <laughs> and sometimes people are discouraged. Because? Because they think, I mean, some parents will tell you, oh, if you don't get money, don't attend. Mm. Yeah, so some parents discourage their children from going for such events because they think it's a waste of time. Mm. Yeah, so, so we need more awareness. awareness. awareness yes. creation. Yeah. So on the issue of awareness, you know, Godwin, as young reporters for the environment, how do you use storytelling and media to raise awareness about environmental issues? Okay, so for me, LinkedIn is my playground. <laughs> I play a lot on LinkedIn. Like, mm. That's my playground. You know, when I'm highlighting issues about the environment, issues about sustainability right as you mentioned storytelling yeah. how can you make it relatable to your audience exactly you know there are several budgets to this you have a time budget how many people can read a text for about three minutes so you have to consider that yeah you have um that the attention budget too that's also very important and also you also have to also consider the target audience who do you want this information to reach mm. for example I can't go to a community and be talking mitigation, adaptation, resilience here and there. They won't understand me. But on LinkedIn, yeah. I can put it there because of the mm. class of people there. Mm. You know? So storytelling is a very powerful tool, but it has to be contextualized. Yeah. Yes. And also, um, maybe trying to tell the story about volunteerism. Yes, there are challenges. I can't give a perfect picture of it. Me, Mama here was my neighbor in school because I read plant biology and he mm. read animal biology. Oh, okay. <laughs> Aside the financial perspective, right? I used to ditch class to go <laughs> and volunteer. <laughs> Not because I just wanted to do it, because I understood the concept of volunteerism. Yeah. And since I knew what I want, I never asked for what I don't want. Okay. I had <laughs> issues with my lectures here and there. Yes. But I think it's that I, right there. I had I had a copy of 
a couple of friends mm. who had my back in the sense that whatever I missed, I had the opportunity to, to catch cover up. up. Mm. Right. It. So it's sacrifice. Sacrifice for a good cause. Mm. And sacrifice to know what you want and how you want to impact community. Today, when I go to speak with people, my fervent prayer is that whoever I encounter has to encounter change. And that's inspiration mm -hmm. driven by leadership. And I had all these two volunteers. So that's what I have to say about right. it. And, and Godwin, uh, you mentioned that you had been in this volunteering space for about eight or nine years. Nine years yeah. um, can you tell us about one, one volunteering project that really stuck with you within the context of impact? Yeah. Impact. There are several, but impact regarding the environment. Just give us one. Has been my experience with Wiry. When we had the opportunity to visit the Magina Market, right? To are you sure you are not trying to flatter Rose here? <laughs> oh no, I'm not flattering Rose. <laughs> oh, I, can, I, can, I can give impacts in the environment and other platforms where I have served and what I have done. Yeah. But that visit to the Magina Market alone like made me understand that these people appreciate beauty, yeah. right? Giving them these reusable bags, everybody wanted to have it, yes, but it wasn't enough. Mm. So they understand that fine, this black plastic one is not nice, but they don't understand the other part that is not nice, exactly. as in what it can cost. Mm. Right. You get that? But with a reusable bags, a way they minya and kamisi, you get that? Yeah. So you wash it and then you reuse it again, and the beauty of how they embraced it yeah. is what stuck with me. It's like these people are willing to have change Absolutely. yeah and other platforms so during the COVID, i wasn't home i was reclassified by them because i had the opportunity to volunteer with the UNFP on the kaya assistance project mm. right when i was COVID, these kaya didn't have a source of livelihood because nobody goes to the market yeah you bear the comfort of your home and then you order for your stuff and the delivery guy brings it to you so the business was a bit handicapped mm. right so UNFP designed the project for them and i was transferring skill sets information from english to key and the bunny for these people awesome yeah that. so wow. bead making mm. bread baking um tie and dye making all this was just empowered them. and today i can walk on the streets of Accra and some of you just say hello to me but i don't even remember where i met the person but that's that's a true politician <laughs> 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 it gives me that that feeling of fulfillment right and Indeed. i know there are others that have gone back to the north Absolutely. regardless of the fact that they can't farm because of the mm. impact of climate change but they are able to engage in small scale businesses like the tie and dye the soap making to support the livelihood of their family yeah. and also empower other young girls in these communities, communities. Yeah. Indeed, you know, so, indeed, indeed. so these right. are this, some this of the things. a really interesting you know experience right there yeah that's stuck with yeah. me yeah. and that's on the policy level too the policy experience has always been an interesting one because of how passionate i'm really about briefly you know so to be brief on that on the policy level i've understood that you will always have to factor what is on the ground. On the so ground. research is very, very important. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Research is key. You know, in 30 seconds, wrapping up for our listeners, what message or words of encouragement would you like to share with our listeners about the power and importance of volunteering? 30 seconds. Starting with you, Mama. Hmm. In 30 <laughs> seconds. 30 seconds. Quick. I mean, you network with people and you learn a lot. Mm. Just that, basically. Great. I will, I will what are you, sure. Godwin? what do we have that we haven't received mm. right once i'm privileged i need to extend that you know you, are, you need to let the community understand that all hope is not lost so true volunteerism you can drive some amount of hope and inspiration yeah. in people indeed indeed thank you so much godwin and then akita for sharing your experience it has been a really, really enlightening discussion and to our listeners thank you for joining us on this inspiring journey remember your voice and action matters happy international volunteers day and let's continue to make a difference together Right, it's now time for environmental news where we bring you the latest updates on sustainability and the environment. We have Isaac with us. Okay, in today's environmental news on SDG, CFAO Ghana goes green with solar power and also EPA cautions manufacturers to avoid using polythene bags for packing cement. Details of this and other stories coming up shortly. Do stay with us. My name is Isaac Akpa now in details where CFAO Ghana PLC, a leading automotive company, has just um, just energy transition uh, with the installation of the state-of-the-art 130 kilowatt ampere solar power system at their headquarters. Uh, the new solar plant consists of a total of 300 uh, monocycling 
solar power uh, panels each generating output of 540 watts at a handing handover ceremony managing director of the CFAO Ghana, Mr. Ademola Adibo, uh, stated that the initiative is in line with the company's commitment to reducing its carbon print uh, by working towards environmental sustainability and energy efficiency towards achieving UN SDGs. Let's go to Environmental Protection Agency, where the executive director of EPA, Dr. Henry Kwabnakukufu, has cautioned the cement manufacturing industry to stick to the use of paper bags for packing rather than uh, polythene bags. Uh, for him, the use of plastic could degrade the environment, hence slowing down the agency's fight against plastic waste. He continued that burning those polythene bags as a form of disposal will lead to discharge of harmful chemicals into the atmosphere, which is inimical to human health. At a press briefing, he said the EPA would do its best to prevent the use of polythene through the means of law and regulations. That's all for today's environmental news on SDG. My name is Isaac Akpa. See you next week. Thank you so much, Isaac. So please tune in same time next week as we continue discussions on all things sustainable development right here on Asasi Radio 99.5 so that people and the planet can prosper. If you have any topic you want us to discuss, please share with us and shoot an email to sdghub at sestint.org. Remember, dear listeners, the future is in our hands and it's our responsibility to ensure a healthier planet for generations to come. Keep raising your voices, keep advocating for change and keep tuning into the SDG Hub for more insightful conversations. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged and stay eco-conscious. And that's a wrap on the SDG Hub. Thanks for staying with us here on the SDG Hub. We have been speaking with Godwin Doe, Partnerships and Resource Mobilization Head and Volunteer with YRE Ghana. We also had with us Mama Kwao Akita, General Secretary and Volunteer with YRE Ghana. I have been your host, Kevin Annan, and I did this with my co-host, Rosemary Balami. We go back to Andy.